Hey, everybody, how are you? John Harris here with my partner, Billy Smith. It's time. It's time to get ready to enjoy some football and some other sports from the cheap seat. Hey, Bill, how's it going? Hey, Johnny, pretty good, except for my picks last week. Well, <laughs> We all supposedly we all have bad. Week. I remember last year when we did this, it was that kind of a week for you. And then I had a great week and all of a sudden I'm in the hood because I was yeah. getting swamped. And this was kind <laughs> of the same, not quite as uh, big a swing, but I'm back uh, in the hunt with you anyway. Yeah, so, I just screwed. The, I just screwed the pooch making three changes and I lost all three. Yeah, <laughs> and you lost all three of them. Yeah. And I think I won two of the three uh, for that. Uh, that took so. Uh, but we're not just football. Remember, we are some other things. Uh, hockey got off uh, last night. A couple of exciting games. Uh, New York and uh, Tampa Bay had a good game where the Rangers actually won coming from behind. Or no, they were tied and then uh, won it late in the game. Uh, a couple of good games. Uh, and uh, hockey's underway, baby. Uh, you can. It's funny to me, though, uh, Bill, is uh, if you notice on ESPN, hockey didn't get a whole lot of coverage when they didn't have it. Now right. it's swamped. It's big time <laughs> hockey coverage all the time. Barry Melrose was back on last night. Steve, they're going to be broadcasting games like crazy on ESPN and two and ESPN plus and stuff. So it's, it's getting ready to uh, take off on ESPN again. They're going to go yeah. nuts with it. A lot of games probably on ESPN plus. I think that's yeah. how it was last year. So um, and then you got, and then you right. got the flyers who's not going to, Shouldn't do well this year. Flyers. Just, um, <laughs> what was the old Chevy Chase line? I use it every week for something in Caddyshack. They're not. Uh, they're not. Uh, they're not good. Good. <laughs> they're not good. Which is kind of an understatement. But, I mean, when your biggest signing is a new coach, and you weren't very good last year, chances are you're not going to be very good this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, Tortorella can only do so much. Uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. I guess. Um, so uh, we'll cover some quick baseball. Basketball is getting ready to start in the NBA and in college. So we're getting ready to gear up for that as well. Uh, last night, baseball playoffs, game ones of all the divisional series, National and American League. You had uh, in the game one, the Phillies surprisingly beat uh, the Atlanta Braves, uh, beating their best pitcher, Max Freed. They did have mm -hmm. to hang on. At one point, they had a seven to one lead. They did have to hang on in the ninth. Uh, uh, Eflin almost uh, coughed it up. The rest of the bullpen was fine, but uh, Eflin had a couple problems, I think. But uh, Alvarado and uh, Sir Anthony Dominguez really did a number. Brad Hand did a nice job. Um, if their bullpen outside of Eflin keeps doing that and they can work their way around that, uh, they got a shot in this series. Pitching beats yeah. good hitting. And now you have your number one going in Wheeler. And then you're number two for the home opener in Philly with Nola. So, and it's a best of five. Yeah. So you, you got to think, you know, Philly's not in bad shape and probably in better shape than a lot of people thought they would be in. Including us. Including, <laughs> I was going to say, including us. I thought four games, maybe not three, they might pull one out. But I'm surprised they win game one in Atlanta. And that's, that's big. Um, uh, let me see. Oh, the Yankees uh, held off Cleveland. I think that's going to be Cleveland's problem is hitting. They they just don't have a lot of offense. Even the games yeah, they won in the wild card were one to nothing, two to one. Uh, yesterday they only scored one run. But you can say that that was against the Yankees' best pitcher, which is Garrett Cole. Right. Um, so uh, I thought the other day was funny. I don't know if you remembered it when they checked uh, Joe Musgrove for uh, foreign substances everywhere, including his ears. <laughs> and uh, I think Buck Showalter looks bad because of that, but they uh, they're keeping him on. They said, and uh, um, I think they signed him to an extension. So yeah, but, I believe uh, so. Yeah, yeah, but uh, that wasn't one of Buck Buck's uh, best moves. Uh, <laughs> I mean, not only was he wrong. And a lot of people are saying, when you do something like that, you better be right, because um, it could backfire. I don't know if it really backfired by then. The Padres had that big lead anyway. So, um, but uh, they did add on, and a couple guys got upset, including Musgrove. And I guess rightfully so. If you're not doing nothing wrong, then 
you know. Right. Uh, but uh, I don't think it looked good for Buck or the Mets. But uh, what happened there was the Mets stopped hitting. Yeah. The bats died. So uh, so last night, though, those same Padres took on the Dodgers and realized that now we have to face a real team. That is, yeah. and the Dodgers took care of business, too. I think it was 5-3. I think they, so it was yeah, it was 5-1. They caught up. They uh, scored a couple runs. But uh, it was when I turned it on originally, it was 5 nothing. So, uh, yeah, they got a couple runs. So uh, they're going to hang in there. I think that's going to be a competitive series. But I think the Dodgers will win that one. And then uh, you had the game of the day, which was Houston and Seattle. And uh, won by a walk-off home run in the bottom of the ninth. <laughs> Seattle <laughs> got a taste of their own medicine from the uh, wild card series and chalked up a big lead. What was what was the lead, Bill? Do you remember? Uh, I think the last I saw was eight to three. I think it might have been even eight, eight to two. Or I'm not sure. I know Houston scored a lot of runs to get back in it. Yeah, the eighth and ninth inning, they scored all yep. all, all the runs. Basically. All the runs, yeah. So, uh, and I think Houston's going to win that series anyway. So I think you'll see Houston, probably the Yankees, uh, which is probably what everybody thought it would be from day one, and then mm -hmm. the Dodgers and uh, the Phillies are giving the Braves a tussle. <laughs> uh, but we'll see what happens. I think it still should, in the end, if it's the best teams, it'll be the Dodgers and the Braves at this point. Right. So uh, we'll see what happens from there. But now let's get back to uh, uh, our main season at the moment, which is the National Football League. Dun, 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 dun. Um, go over last week's results. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> Bill had a, <laughs> Bill had a tough week, especially against the spread. Uh, I do do the Brit. I do do the bed. <laughs> yeah, you did the dead, buddy. Uh, you were five and nine with. We both had two pushes, so that helped a little bit. That actually kept our percentage up. Thank God, right? Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you were you at five and nine, and I was nine and five against the nice. spread. So uh, all those games we differed, I won, and like you said. You changed a couple games Sunday morning on the Sunday morning uh, quick shot express, and uh, it hurt you. Yep. Um, I was scared that Vegas – I, I would have won against the spread, but I was scared that Vegas would have almost beat the Chiefs. And the Eagles didn't pull away for a while either. They uh, made it way more yeah. interesting than it should have been. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll end up covering the Monday night game, but uh, I tell you what, the Raiders up 20 nothing, and, and then they – I don't understand. They why change anything different than yeah. in the second half? <laughs> yeah, you know, Jacobs was running pretty well. Right. I I would have stuck with a run a lot more. I mean, you well, may have they, a great. They receiver, actually but... did. I think. I think with that, with him being like that, that they could have passed some more. I mean, Devontae Adams had had the two long ones, and he got yeah. pass interference twice. So I mean, you guys that's are... true. Well, the other part too is. If you're going to pass more like they did, you got to look for other guys besides Devontae Adams because they're going to cover right. him like a blanket. I thought they could have went to Renfro more. I know they lost Waller and they lost their tight ends. They didn't have that. Right. Maybe hit Jacob some more out of the backfield or somebody, but uh, if you don't have another receiver on the other side, but, um, you know, but I, the one, the one play that killed them, I think, was that catch where Adams bobbled the ball on the yeah. way out of bounds. And that was the right call by the ref. Uh, but boy, if he doesn't bobble that thing, that's a huge difference in the game. Huge. Yeah. Cause that's a first down and yep. the Raiders keep the ball and they were in field goal range. Yeah. Close and I would have won my fantasy. And I would have won my fantasy league. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And you would have won your, yeah. So it cost you. So yeah, I didn't do so good. You know what I didn't realize in my fantasy league, and I lost a close game. One, I was dumb and forgot to take replace Jonathan Taylor. So I got no points at that running back spot. That hurt me. And I didn't realize that Elliott was going to be out for the Eagles. So he was my kicker. So I had <laughs> two positions that got no points, and I lost by seven. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I would have, you know, I would have probably pushed if I had Elliott. And one, if uh, Taylor gets 10 yards, you know, <laughs> or vice versa, I mean, I would have won. So it's like, I can't believe, but I don't, it's because it's a free league and I'm doing it just to do it. It 
yeah uh, i kind of forget lose and forget <laughs> i'm like son of a all right uh straight we both did what did we do uh you were eight and eight with you were a lot better on a on a straight pick right. than, than the spread uh i was nine and seven so i wasn't that much better one game we both have a tie during the season so as of right now you are 43 and 36 the percentage is 55.6 percent i am 42 and 37 one game behind you now buddy i'm coming yeah uh, at 52.4% against the spread, I came, I saw, I conquered, buddy, because you had a tough <laughs> week, and uh, and I had a pretty good one. You were, uh, oh, what we say, five and eight, and I have it over here. Your percentage against the spread is 48.7%. See, I think you dropped a little. I am exactly where you are, my friend. I caught you. Nice. So very good. Forty-eight point seven. So we're back where we normally are with our two different methods. And so, as far as I'm concerned, let the season now begin, my friend. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're we're caught up. Well, you know what's interesting enough: eleven games were decided by seven points or less. So wow. I didn't know it was that's that a lot of that's was, that could have go, gone either way. On and the spread, yeah. It went, it went way. your way. And, I went my way. My way. I got lucky. Yeah, it was the pretty, game was pretty interesting. Me the games are helping me. Obviously, Kansas City picking Vegas to cover. I just had a feeling there. Uh, the game that hurt was Seattle. That hurt both of us, though. I think. Yeah. We, oh no, you covered the spread on that one. I did not. I took Seattle all the way across. Um, Vikings. That was my pick of the week, and I lost on the spread. <laughs> that was my yeah, that's another one minnesota was up big too i think yep. they were up like at least 15 yeah <clears throat> that was my lock and and i took uh uh tennessee saved me but i thought your team was going to hang in there for a while but well uh, and then there's that little controversy with rivera saying what's the difference and he says quarterback <laughs> i mean he didn't hesitate <laughs> he apologizes later later <laughs> he shouldn't have apologized i'm like no that's the whole you know, thing. Apologize yeah. to Wentz. Stick to your guns. Well, hey, I mean, th- once again, the play calling. I mean, right. you need one yard. Right. That's true. What are you throwing? The, I mean, I granted they had no timeouts left, but roll throw, out. Do something. Roll out. Throw it away. Don't throw a pick. You know, just do something else. Uh, and I know he was desperate. Um, and he had another receiver open. And you saw that receiver going, man. Yep. Just so, he was so bummed because he was wide open. If he sees them, it's a touchdown. Yeah. So, um, but uh, you're right. That's a lot of ifs and the play calling, terrible, just awful. So, I mean, when you're hampered by that a little bit too, I mean, his his overall numbers aren't bad again. Like they weren't right. for Indy. They're not bad. Uh, now, just, now Rivera's just, saying yeah. we have the quarterback we're going to build around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's just the slip ups outweigh you know the other stuff. That's the whole thing, That's especially when the game's on the line. At, you know, in the last minute, it's just... And I will say, uh, if they lose, the first person everybody's looking at in this case more than usual is Wentz. If they lose, right. Wentz didn't do enough. You know, right? It could be a great defensive game by the other team, but it's Wentz's fault. Uh, but then again, he's got to learn to come through in those situations. That's what your good quarterbacks yeah. do. Uh, and the the other thing that really ticked me off was two two of them, and it was all officiating, which is terrible. Oh, they, I God, think they yeah. got to start. I think they start need to start reviewing penalties, at least certain penalties, well, like roughing the pass or anything. They're going to look at that. Tom Brady, that, that was no sack. No, no, and, and, no and, and then the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, and, he I mean, the guy took the fumble. ball. The, he, he recovered the fumble. Yeah, he forced the fumble. It never hit the ground, and he, he still and he still tried to take his weight off. So I mean, yeah. I don't know what the hell yeah. the referee was. And the refer- and then afterwards, the referee tries to justify it by saying he put all his weight on it. And even after looking at the replay, I'm like, dude, either <laughs> either you're a liar or right. you're blind. <laughs> One yeah. or the other. And not even that. Even if you did, he had the ball. He had the ball. By then, he's not roughing a quarterback. He's a right. runner. He's a run- he's, yeah. He's a runner. <laughs> so, I mean, in a way, Kansas City got screwed big time on that. Um, yeah. So, 
But uh, that game, I think I even told you on the Sunday game, that scared me. I really yeah. thought Vegas might win that game. So, uh, well, Like I said, they need to review some of the stuff. And yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I agree, my and then, friend. And then Aikman gets uh, called out, said something about you got to take about the dresses, dresses. off. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I like to comment. And I really yeah. think a lot of more people, if you ask them and they're honest, are yeah. going to go, hey, he's right. I mean, he yep. played in that league and he got beat to crap. He knows. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had Buddy Ryan's guys and Bill Parcells guys flying at him all the time. He yep. played, uh, you know, against Reggie White. He played uh, against Lawrence Taylor. He was getting, you know, uh, Pepper Johnson, Harry Carson. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Clyde Simmons. I mean, you look at that. Washington had guys that were coming after. I mean, Aikman played in a tough division when the league was tough. So right. as far as I'm concerned, when he says something like take that's the dresses right. off, you know what? <laughs> Find me a woman in the NFL that's tough enough to play. He's really right, factually. Yeah. So you right. know what? Screw them. And you know what's going to happen? Uh, the only reason it might not, I don't know, it might, because it's ESPN. Uh, I was yeah. going to say is, uh, is like people were trying to give Al Michaels crap the other day. And you know what? Yeah. Amazon's not making him apologize. I exactly. like that fact. You know what? Yeah. On, if you don't want to watch us, don't watch us. We don't yeah. care. Well, because you're Disney paying to watch us. And they're all woke, woke stuff. It's all you know, woke and, it's, and corporate and you know, yeah. everybody's oh. and they get everything they deserve back too. That's what you oh, know. Oh, absolutely. You, you, should, you shouldn't be taking stances one way or another. You're a business. You right. Know. You hired Aikman to be Aikman. Yeah. Let him be Aikman. All right. Let him be the broadcaster he is. Because I think he's got it's like Romo's okay. But Romo can get on my nerves. Aikman doesn't. It doesn't bother mm -hmm. me. I'm not a big Joe Buck fan, but that's me personally. But I like Aikman, and I think right. he makes Buck a better announcer. I don't, yeah. you know, I think you got to leave the guy alone. I And I think the comment was dead on. I mean, the sentiment was absolutely right. You know, hey, it's okay to protect them, but let's don't go overboard here. So, yeah, I think you're right. You hit that on the head because that roughing the that roughing the passer call and the one against Tom Brady as well. That wasn't really rough right. in the past. But the thing, like you said, I mean, they review everything else. Why not review it? Yeah. yeah. I thought Kansas city's lineman uh, Jones was very good after the, in the post game interviews, he didn't get riled. He didn't get Rammy. He didn't, he just said, Oh, I could see it regular time, but you go back and look at the video. Blah, blah, blah. And he's one, one of the first ones that said, that's a call that needs to be reviewed. Yeah. And he's right. I mean, Aikman said it on the broadcast, too. But Jones is right. That's a call that needs to be reviewed. He didn't blast anybody. I could see it's how fast it is. He goes, and I weigh 350 pounds. I could see what it looks like. But if you review that call, then that's not going to stand. And he's right. right. But he handled it very well. Um, and, uh, and somebody kept, they were plugging Andy Reid. He goes, and finally, after the third question about it, he goes, you guys are really trying to get me fined, aren't you? <laughs> Which is his way of going, look, I agree with you guys, but I'm not answering your question, okay? <laughs> so I think that was that was the right way to handle that. And they moved on because they knew after three times, and he says that, I'm not answering it, all right? You're not going to get me. So Because uh, coaches, they get fined. There's no appeal. Yeah, they well, you know what? I, like I, I give them props because I would have I would have been saying it and get called out and get fined. Yeah. I don't really yep. give a crap because they need to yep. be told that they sucked at their job. Oh, yeah. Know? My and, salary would probably all go to the NFL for a year. <laughs> the first year <laughs> I would be, you know, man, I'll argue and everything. What the? You know, it's it's coming. So, yeah, I wouldn't make any money. I'd have to get endorsements to make any money I'd, you know, probably like when john mackerel used to argue with everything in tennis oh, you yeah. gotta be i'd have to get those kind of commercials and endorsements to make any money because all my salary would be going back in fines to the nfl i'd be no good so um well i guess it's time to get started for this week bud so we can get through yep. it yeah uh, these these uh odds are up to date up to the minute here as of wednesday afternoon at uh 237 Central, 337 Eastern, um, right up to the minute. So, game one, Washington at Chicago. It was Chicago by one up until this morning. It is now Washington by one. All right. Uh, what, do you, what do you 
you this think, could be bro? another snooze fest on a Thursday night. I don't. Yes, sir. I, Those Amazon's got to be like, what the frig are you doing to us? And good games <laughs> when it was on NFL Network, but no, we get the crap games. Yeah, uh, and early earlier, uh, Washington was favorite, so uh, I kind of I'll take the point. I like the extra point. Not that it comes down to really anything. Yeah, I mean, Washington uh, still is the one favored by a point. It was Chicago. So, but now it's oh, Washington's now favored by a point. I'm looking right at it. No, oh, no, you, you're right. No, I, one, I apologize. It is now Chicago yeah. by a point. It was Washington by a point about an hour ago. So right. you're right. We're going up to date. Up to date. Yeah. It switched back. It is now the Bears by a point. So yeah, I'll take Washington, uh, and it should be a, like a go ahead three or four point game anyway. So I did the same thing. I, I already – mine are already – I got my whole done. Yeah, I already took Washington for the, for okay. that one as well. Um, let's see. Washington and Washington. There we go. Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh. It, it was eight and a half. It's now eight. Um, and yeah. What else can you say? I mean, they're going to start Kenny Pickett. He's their quarterback of the future. They're yeah, and he, passed, he threw the ball 50 times last 50 week. 50 times, had over 300 yards, like yeah. 54 times. I mean, he uh, only had one pick, uh, but he didn't have any TDs. But, that, but I don't think any, that's on him. Uh, without really any help. Uh, he's, got no, he's got one receiver. That's it. Yeah, I'll take Tampa, and, and I'll even give the eight. Yeah, I think I already did that, too. Let's see. Yeah, I did. Uh Green Bay and the J E T S Jets. It is a seven point. <laughs> you gotta spread. love the Jets, man. You gotta. Be. Jets I are mean, hanging uh, around now. It's a seven point spread in Green yeah. Bay. Yeah, I just think after last week's debacle in in uh, London, I think Green Bay is going to come out, and uh, I think they might put it to the Jets. Yeah, I think you're right. So That's I'll take Green Bay to. minus the seven. I'm wondering if we're going to have any differences this week. Uh, <laughs> actually, I think we are going to have one or two, but I'll surprise you. Baltimore and the G Men. And it is Baltimore by five. Yeah, this. It's in on, New Jersey. It should be good record wise. I, I don't know how good the Giants are with their four, well, they're four and one. Uh, yeah, they're I, four and one. Yeah. And uh, I'm not. I'm not sold on them. <laughs> so I'll, take, <laughs> I'll take the Ravens and uh, give the points. Yeah, it's five. If it was seven or eight, I might take yeah. the Giants for the for the spread. But right. five, I think Baltimore will have enough offense to take care of business. And the Giants, though Baltimore's defense isn't great, like the old Baltimore defenses of old, uh, the – Giants don't have a lot of weapons to. Uh, Cotton O'Neill Station Car Services would like to second. talk to John Harris. Sorry, buddy. Uh, we will get rid it's of Cotton O'Neill Station Car Services for John Harris. I'm getting phone calls from a hospital. That's impressive. So please <laughs> ignore that, folks. We're going to continue. I'm not going to stop uh, recording here. <laughs> uh, that's going to stop. And uh, I'm going to hang up on it here. Yeah, I did that. Uh, okay, so yeah, if it was seven or eight, I would uh go with the Giants, but in this case, it's like Baltimore, uh, by five, so I'll take right. uh Baltimore. Um, San Francisco, Atlanta, the Niners are picked by five and a half. Um, I don't know. yeah, I'm like in the uh 40 49ers here, but. What impressed me was Atlanta. They they were down twenty to nothing against Tampa, and uh, and, and they fought they back. They actually could have won that game because yeah, they had a chance. The blown the blown call by the ref again. Yeah, exactly. That that once again a bad call. That bad roughing call. So uh, I'll take the 49ers to win, but I will take the Falcons to cover. Ah, we will have a difference then because I took San Francisco across the board. Though I do agree with your point, they hang around, they play tough, and they did get screwed last week, or that might have been a whole different outcome. Um, Miami and Minnesota, it is in Miami. Uh, of course, up to date injury news in this game is that 
Tua Takleivoa is still out. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, they list him as questionable, but they were saying today that Skylar Thompson, the third string QB that finished the game last week, will be the starter. Bill, you have an update for on the Bridgewater part, right? Yeah, I, I just heard it. He may suit up, but not start. He could be like the emergency uh, okay. backup. Okay. Uh, so there you have that. They uh, was it him? No, it was Cleveland dropped Josh Rosen. Cleveland dropped yeah. him. So, um, but he was basically a third string practice squad guy anyway. So yeah, but uh, Miami Miami's beat up all over. So uh, I'll I'll go ahead and take the Vikings and give the points. Okay, and I did the same thing. The point spreads three and a half. So I did that as well. Um, I am actually surprised that the three and a half is as small as it is under the quarter with the quarterback situation going on. And that right. could change. And we'll check that out on the Sunday morning express, mm -hmm. uh, Cincinnati and new Orleans. And then we will uh, let everybody know who was uh, sponsoring us this week, but it is in new Orleans, the Bengals, and they are favored by two. Uh, I think the saints are, uh, yeah. Bengals are favored by two. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah, I, this should be a good game. It was disappointing last week with the way the Saints defense played. Uh, but I think Cincinnati's got a little too much firepower. So, well, I'll take the Bengals and give the two. Okay. I think I did the same as well. Though they are starting to use that Taysom Hill option thing. Yeah. Again. And he got four – didn't he get four touchdowns again? He uh, had a boatload he, of them. He passed he for one and ran for – Two, two, maybe three. Two, yeah, he had to so three, maybe yeah. get three. And you know what gets me? You know when he's in there, he's going to run ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah, so you what, know it. What are, is he that what are these good? Doing? I, I mean, <laughs> is he like the greatest running back in the history of the NFL? I mean, you know most of the time what he's going to do. Now he did throw one, right? Which is, I guess, maybe that's enough to throw people off and say, hey, you know, we can't just, uh, you know. And he did quarterback a little bit one season when right. guys were hurt. Yeah. So. Uh, he's his contract is actually weird if he plays so many snaps or games at quarterback he gets paid this much which is higher yeah otherwise he gets paid this much uh, yeah i mean so he, i, I he's think probably he, got incentives I, 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 yeah i think he could be starting ahead of dalton i mean i agree with that i agree with that i think but they did figure out a way with a win with dalton mostly at quarterback and you yeah. still as a runner in the wildcat so i look at him as like the closer the real good old time closers like uh, Al Herbosky and uh, <laughs> uh, all the all the Goose Gossage and yeah. Raleigh, Fingers, Raleigh Fingers, the Hall of Fame closers who come in, Rob Dibble, who would yeah. hit you with a hundred mile an hour fastball and say, "Come on, you got something? You got a problem with?" I mean, those guys who come in and took no prisoners. You know, you had your starters, you had your guys that went six, seven, eight innings, and then you bring in Hill, just like. Dalton would go three quarters or whatever, and then you bring in Hill. Yeah. I mean, I look at him as that kind of a player, but like you said, you know, most of the time what he's going to do, you know, if he's in there, he's, he's the focal point of whatever they're going to do. Right. You know, he's either going to pass up, which is obviously his quarterback, or he's going to run the football. Yeah. So you got to stay on him, but he keeps beating people. So. You're right. He, I don't know what to do. I did pick Cincinnati the same as you did all the way across. Okay. Uh, Indy and Jacksonville, it was two and a half. It is now down to two. Yes. It's yeah. Indianapolis by two. Yeah. Jonathan Taylor is questionable here. Um, but I tell you what, they did. They, I think they ran the ball pretty good last week. They did. They actually um, did run the ball well. So I, I will, I will take the Colts at home and, uh, and uh, they'll take the lead in the uh, division. Well, guess what? <laughs> we finally have one, buddy. I Good. am taking Jacksonville. I think Doug Peterson was pissed. Jacksonville, remember, knocked Cincinnati or knocked Indy out last year from a playoff spot. Now yes, that could yeah. work either way. That could work for you, and that they're really ticked off, really pissed yeah. about that still. Um. Or it could work as a Jacksonville saying, we can play with these guys. We got their number. Uh, now, the difference is, of course, it's not Wentz at quarterback. It's Matt Ryan. 
but I'm looking at it as though it's very similar. Ryan's learning the offense. He's actually a little less mobile than Wentz. He's getting sacked like crazy because the, the Colts have so many injuries on their offensive line. Yeah, that they do. They should be one of the strongest, but uh yeah, but they're injured, they're hurt. Yeah. Um so I'm gonna take Jacksonville to win a tough one, a tough physical game, I think. Um so yeah, I took Jacksonville across the board. So that's gonna make Very it interesting. Good. We got one, buddy. Well, we got two. We got the other one too. You took Atlanta on the spread. Cleveland, New England. Uh, in Cleveland, in the dog pound, Mac Jones is still out. It'll be uh, happy zappy at quarterback. <laughs> and uh, for New England, um, of course, Deshaun Watson's still out. They thought that uh, um, Garrett was going to be out, but it looks like he's going to play, Miles Garrett. Um, so Cleveland is picked by two and a half in the dog pound. Yeah, this one, uh, especially last week, New England really – shocked me <laughs> they uh they put a number on the detroit lions who was like one of the highest yeah uh, they were the number one offense in the, NFL, in the league and, uh, yeah they, were they shot one. them out and whew, yeah. that was that was, that a was defensive ugly. Battle. yeah it was it really was but uh but i like cleveland cleveland's firing on all cylinders here and i'll, I'll take them at home i have a feeling <laughs> i have a hunch so guess what buddy Good. I'm going to do or die. I did it already. I do or die, buddy. I'm taking Bill Belichick to figure out a way to shut down that Cleveland mega offense that showed up last week. <laughs> um, if uh, if they can get a little bit of a running game going, uh, I like Happy Zappy. I can't remember his first name, yeah. first, but I do like him. Don't and get Stevens me wrong. Stevens is running the ball. That, uh, yeah. Harris is, uh, is probably out. Is but, out. Uh, but Stevenson. Stevens is Stevenson's Stevens is Stevens is down back. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so uh, <coughs> I uh, I like Bill Belichick against Cleveland. Uh, mm -hmm. I I think the defense is gonna is gonna figure out a way. They're gonna have to stop Hunt and Chubb. That's the thing. Um, but if they slow down the running game a little bit, I think they can put some pressure on uh, Percet. Percet, who. Started in New England, so if anybody knows him, it's Bill Belichick. Yeah. So I uh, I like I like New England in this, so I went with that. That looks like your upset special. Yeah. You know what? Well, it's no, not both my lock both, of the week. Both, but I both, both of them are upset specials. Upset specials, yeah. too. Can yeah. we do three in a row here? Well, you never know. Uh, <laughs> no, we won't be. Because it's <laughs> Carolina and the Rams. Uh, Baker Mayfield is out. Of course, Sam Darnold's still out. So it looks like is it it's PJ Walker. I like right? PJ Walker. Yeah. I, I don't mind him. He yeah. won both games. He started yeah. last year, I think. But I, uh, uh, but it's and they him. fired their coach. Uh, Vern yes. Rule is yes. Adios. So that could work. That could work well. I mean, so uh, Eve Wilkes is going to coach. He coached in Arizona for a season. Yeah. Uh, he's a defensive coordinator. Uh, I think that uh, you know the only problem for pj isn't pj it's that the only real weapon he has is mccaffrey more yeah. isn't bad at wide receiver but that's it that's all he's got um so they're yeah. gonna key on those guys mccaffrey will yeah. still get his catches and yards but he did play a couple games last year so he is familiar and they with, did win. with it with and, this the guy, rams, so. and the rams aren't tearing it up Uh, Man, they really the Rams are. Uh, yeah, they're, they're they don't uh, look like Super Bowl uh, defending champs. I'll tell they you that. sure don't right now, and their their lines beat up. Stafford's getting the crap beat out. Um, but uh, with all that said, I will take the Rams, but I will take the ten and a half points because okay. Carolina's defense has it is that big. Bad. It is a big spread. I'll take the ten and a half. Uh, I. I my instinct was to take the Rams across the board, so that's what I did for now. I'm gonna. Oh, so you're taking Carolina on the, on the ten and a half. Yes. Let me, let me put that. Hopefully they only lose by ten. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a 38-28 game. You'll be okay. Right. Um, Arizona and Seattle. Uh, Rashad Penny, Seattle's running back, is out for the season. Yes. And they have a good running back and a uh, Walker, Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker. Kind of, yeah. He's, he's going to uh, have to step in. Yeah. Arizona's uh, picked by two and a half. 
Yeah, this is, should be an in, a fun fun game to watch. And yeah. uh, and I I've uh, I've been betting against Seattle, take, you know, against them, and uh, I'm gonna have to do it again because I just think this is the this is the week where uh, Kyler Murray breaks out. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I think you're right. Only because I got to admire, and I was really down on him, uh, and was for quite a while, like seasons, years. I mean, he was a backup for a long time, and I'm like, ah, oh, they're bringing him in. But Geno Smith, yeah, is I give show him in the NFL because, yeah, he's got a couple of weapons at receiver, but everybody knows who they are. But yeah. he's figuring out a way to get the ball to them and to other guys, and he may still be the number one ranked quarterback in the NFL. I know he was as of last week. Um, he's running an offense and he's, yeah. he's a threat and he's putting well, the ball put up, on the money. Yeah, they put up 30 last week, so he's probably yeah. still, you know. So. Yeah. So I, I like Gino, but I think you're right, especially since the spread's only two and a half. Mm -hmm. If it was above three, I would probably take Seattle to cover. Uh, but I think you're right i think kyler murray's gonna they're gonna wake up now i think connor's still hurt if I'm not mistaken. yeah it looks like they're gonna start that uh endo uh benjamin okay and they're gonna have yeah because connor's still out uh so. this is not the week hopkins is back i think he's back their next game uh mistaken. he suspended six six, six weeks He'll be so this is week, week seven. seven so yeah. yeah uh so he's out uh it's funny to me when they were starting to go to Ertz, they moved the ball, and then they stopped going to Ertz. <laughs> and they tried to force it to Hollywood Brown, and that, that was yeah. a problem a couple of times. Yeah, it's just uh, play calling. Yeah, yeah, just... yeah, that was a play calling thing. So, And they made a huge mistake, too. They should have oh, beat Philly. They should have beaten Philly. I mean, They I never guess he, should he have know. threw that ball in the end zone. Yeah, he didn't know he, he didn't know it was four, fourth right. down. That's and, what it was. He ran on second down, thought he yeah. got the first down and slid. Right. And he slid, was a yard yeah. short because and when you slide, like, that's when it right. stopped. And right. he was a yard short, didn't know that, thought he had the first down, spiked it. So when he spikes it, it's fourth down. Yep. And it's fourth and about a yard. If they go for it, they got no timeouts. Um, I think there was only like 40 some odd seconds left. Or uh, no, less about half a minute, twenty-seven seconds. If uh, they go for it, they don't have a way to stop the clock. If they run it, if they pass it and don't get it, they're done. Yeah. Uh, so they had to kick the field goal there from fifty some odd yards. Uh, there's debate as to whether it was tipped or not because it went wide, right? So right, far. right. And but it doesn't really matter. It's the fact that you forced yourself into a field goal. And that was a mental mistake. I I think they could have went down and tied the game. I yeah. mean, he had the shot. If he didn't slide when he did, um, or if he gets up and they run another play. Right. I just think out, if you're, you're going to run the ball like that as a quarterback, sometime, I mean, yeah, you don't want to get beat up, but dive head for – I mean, you know what I'm saying? you got to know just, where you are. Right. I mean, the, the sliding crap, you know. Yeah doesn't do it for me it's because tough. they're they're going to spot the ball where you start your side not where you end up in the so, immortal uh, words of troy bakeman he's got to take the dress off yeah take the dress off run you're a football player yeah uh, i mean ain't like 11 guys are hitting you one or you two know, guys might hit. i know you're you know? not a big guy but i think if he went like you said head first and slid he would have got the first down yeah uh, be josh allen Run, yeah. you know, run hard. Yeah, baby. he don't care. He, just, he don't care, man. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> at some point, you're going to go. That guy's going to get hurt so bad. But for you know, but if you're Buffalo, you got to love that guy. You got to yeah. love him. I like well, Mahomes. Sometimes, but yeah. Mahomes will well, sometimes run out of when you That's smart, but sometimes when you dish out the dish it out, you know, it, oh, it helps you. Guys, I mean, you look at Allen when he runs the football for Buffalo, and there's a lot of times he's bigger than the guy trying to tackle him. So he mm -hmm. straight arms him, runs him over, gets what he's got to get. I mean, yeah. he's, he's, a, that's a football player who can play quarterback. Yes. That's not just, you know, <laughs> I mean, he's, he could play. I like that guy a lot. Mm -hmm. If I didn't like my home and you know, same thing with, with Philly, we'll get to there, but Jalen Hurts has proven to be better than I thought. And he can run the ball and runs it 
similar. And right. they showed him, and in college especially, but he still does it. This guy was deadlifting 600 pounds. They said his body below from the waist down is like a fullback, like a running back. Hmm. They said he is so hard to tackle from the waist down because he'll just run right through you. I'm like, that's what you got to have. You got to have a football player who can play quarterback rather than like Josh Allen and him, rather than a guy that, you know, some, but some guys, you know, everybody has their own strengths, but I love, I love Josh Allen, but you're right. If he went head first, I think he's got the first down and that game could have went completely different. For yeah. Because they stopped scoring after the first half again. Mm -hmm. And that's what they got to watch. Uh, so I went Arizona too. That's the long way of saying I agreed with it. <laughs> Here's the game, buddy. Buffalo and Kansas City in Arrowhead. As of right now, Buffalo is picked by two and a half points. When, I just got to ask you a question. When was the last time the Chiefs were underdogs at home? That's a good point. <laughs> no, and, and it might have been a Buffalo game last year <laughs> in, in, the, in the playoffs. It could have been. Um, that's a good question. And that's yeah, a trivia my, question. If, if, we yeah, were, that's a good if I was prepared for it, I would have probably, <laughs> uh, but I would have had to Google it. Uh, but I'm, and I'm not going to do that now, but we could have had somebody. Uh, and we still, I guess we still can, because we're we're only recording. We're not putting this out live. So there you, there go, you go, folks. Answer this question, uh, and you'll win a semi-valuable prize from Public John Media. When was the last time the Kansas City Chiefs were the underdog at Arrowhead Stadium, and we will count regular season and or playoffs. The last time the Kansas City Chiefs were considered the underdog when playing a home game. Um, and uh, we get a winner, the first person that lets us know by message, which is the public outlook, uh, I'll email the public john at outlook.com, comments on this video um, as well. Or uh, you can message us at the uh, Public John Media Facebook page. Whoever has the very first answer will win a semi, as I say, semi valuable prize from Public John <laughs> Media. Uh, question one more time Who or uh, when was the last time the Kansas City Chiefs were a home underdog? It's a good question, Bill. Um, and I'm going to look it up afterwards, but because uh, yeah, we got to have the answer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the answer either. So I, okay. I, I have an idea. Like I said, it might have been Buffalo in last year's playoff game. Might have been the last time, but it might have been before that. We don't know. Yeah. Um, so there but it is. Buffalo, Casey. It is yeah. Buffalo by two and a half. So you know, Kansas City will be the underdog. There should be plenty of points to go around in this game. I think it's going to be above 60. Yeah, um, there's an over and it's at 60. Take but, the over. But uh, Kansas City just seems one dimensional right now. Just on the Kel uh, yeah, J uh, Kelsey. There. Four touchdowns, one guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised they haven't given the, the uh, rookie uh, Skyler, uh, Skyler, Skyler Moore, more, uh, more, more, uh, more touches, yeah. reps. Yeah. Um, but uh, Buffalo and Josh Allen just looks way too strong. So I will take the Buffalo and gladly give the two and a half. Oh, gladly. What an insult. <laughs> um, this, my friend. <laughs> <Do it. laughs> is, no, this is where you'll be surprised. I went Buffalo the same way. Uh. <laughs> I did. It's two and a half. If it was higher than three, I would have taken the Chiefs to cover. All right. Uh, you're right. Plenty of points to go around. I don't bet, but this is a week where I might look up on DraftKings. As of right now, it is uh, – where is it? Buffalo, KC. Uh, 54 is the over under. Wow. I thought maybe it would have been like 58. I might – have to actually figure out how to get on DraftKings and take that. And yeah, you know, don't throw forget, you get that to win that. Don't forget, you get that two hundred dollars. <laughs> That's right. I might, I might actually, and then just you know, cherry pick games. I think are outrageous doing this. I'm not going to do right. very much, like one or one. If I do one a week, I would be surprised. But uh, right, because uh, uh, I had to stop doing that for a while. Yeah. Um, but that's one that, that almost calls your name. It's like, 
Yeah, I won. I won. I won fifty last week on Buffalo. So uh, did you? Yeah, I I took them and put you know minus the fourteen. Oh, I told you that was my lock yeah, of the week. And, that was your lock of the week. And boy, I, I, I'm just taking my stuff. Let's I didn't take a look a at our locks more. of the week from last week. <laughs> Billy crushed it with the Pittsburgh Buffalo lock of the week. It was a fourteen point spread. What was the final? Thirty eight to three or something? Or it was it was bad. Yeah, thirty eight to three. Yeah, it was bad. So Billy won his lock of the week easily. My lock of the week, not so much. Vikings won, but they did not cover. It was a seven-point cover, and they didn't cover. They held on to win. So uh, Bill's lock of the week was better, a lot better than mine. Um, <laughs> he won his. Uh, before we get to that, I did pick. The, I did pick Buffalo as well, Bill. Sorry, it's okay. not one you're going to gain on me. All right. Unless I get a twitch Sunday morning on the Sunday Morning <laughs> Express, and uh, you could. <laughs> and you never know. I could. You're right. Uh, if somebody says uh, they saw Josh Allen sniffling. I might just jump on that. <laughs> he was wearing a mask. He's never worn a mask before. Uh oh, he's got COVID. I'm jumping on. Uh, uh, before we get to the Monday night game, guess what? I need to let everybody know that our friend in Vineland at Vineland Realty Corporation, Dennis and Graldi, is sponsoring us here and all the public John media events. And we thank Dennis. Uh, they are located at 634 East Landis Avenue in Vineland, New Jersey. And Vineland Realty Corp, the staff, Dennis, everybody there will help you with all your residential and business property needs, whether you need to sell a house, buy a house, rent one out, or, uh, or at least one, get, uh, rent something out. Um, Dennis and his crew will help you there. Their number is 856-690-9482. Once again, 856-690-9482. Or if you're in the South Jersey area, you can uh, head into their office at 634 East Landis Avenue in Vineland, New Jersey. Like we said, all your residential and business property needs at Vineland Realty Corporation. We thank Dennis a lot. And, uh, and he watches, shares, and tunes in uh, to all these things so that's great and yes Dennis you are eligible for the question of the week as well when was the last time the Kansas City Chiefs were considered a home underdog and we'll count playoffs and regular season um, so I guess really Bill the first person to google that will be the winner yeah I'll we'll see if anybody's paying we'll attention, anybody to pays attention to us <laughs> probably not they'll go Harris no, I like that Billy guy, but uh, the other guy, <laughs> I, I can't, he can't even get his colors straight. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm taking uh, – well, actually, that's uh, the last afternoon game. We have two games left. Yeah, we got two games left. Sunday yeah. night and Monday night. Remember, your buy teams this week are Detroit, the Lions, who need a break after last week and need to regroup, Houston, who probably ticked off that they – got their first win and probably wanted to keep playing Tennessee <laughs> and Vegas Vegas is home wallowing and probably you know in the VIP yeah club, and I tell lines. you what Devontae there, Adams kept him suspended I guess they, it they, looked did he get suspended there well no about, not yet but they uh they, they put a lawsuit on him for yeah uh, he is being sued there's also a criminal charge coming the guy signed a criminal charge yeah <laughs> for assault and batteries um you know what I I, I don't condemn what he did but I tell you what, some of these people, guys with the cameras, man, they you could be walking and you and you, you just walk up into your face. I need my well, state. Well, he did walk saying? in front of him. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't condone him pushing him. I really don't. Right. I have two problems here. One, the guy walked right in front of him. All right. Two, where was security? Right. They should have kept that guy away. Say, hey, look, you can take your picture from the side. That's where you're supposed to be. He's got credentials. He's allowed them. He right. was a legit guy. But you need to be off to the side. You know, the player has the right of way to go to the locker room. You know? Right. So, yeah, I, I I don't condone him pushing him. But I could see after that kind of game, the frustration he had, uh, and a guy walking in front of him startles him. Right. You know? And let's face it, there have been times when fans approach players and you don't know. It could have been a dangerous situation, you know. He's fortunate this was a credential guy that was a photographer, but what if it was a fan? Right. I mean, you don't know. Um, so I don't have a big problem with him pushing him. And, of course, I'm thinking that the guy is already exaggerating and just looking for a Well, yeah, he's probably looking for a payday. Looking for know. a big payday, and he's going to get it. 
plus Adams is going to be fined by the NFL and could very well be suspended. Right. Um, I think if so, it'll be – hopefully it's just a game. But now that there's char- pre- uh, charges pressed by the guy, they could look at it under the NFL's behavioral clauses, and he could get a big suspension now. Right. Because how do you say this guy who he shoved and has a criminal complaint against him uh, and all the other things that they've punished guys six weeks for, he could get a bigger suspension than this, than the one game. Yeah, that they were talking about. I mean, you got to worry about that if you're him. And I, I feel yeah. bad for him. I'm not a Raiders fan, but it ha- this has nothing to do with teams or anything else. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't condone what he did, but uh, I'm worried about the punishment he's going to receive. Yeah, if, if it was if, if if it was me, I think I'd just be a fine. I don't see. Yeah, I think a, he, uh, suspension be, being warranted. Yeah. I mean, it ain't like he clubbed a guy. Right. He just and they may have to wait and... now until they see what happens in court. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so. so that's a shame. It really and is. And that's not going to happen anytime soon, the way the court system. Oh, the way the court system, especially in Vegas. You know how many cases they have backed up, probably? So, so uh, but yeah, uh, that could be, but it won't be this week. And yeah. it probably won't be next week. Right. Um, so, but Vegas is on that bye this week. Um, mm-hmm. Which brings us to Dallas and Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, Dak Prescott is not playing. Uh, he's been ruled out. So I guess today he didn't, as Jerry said, he couldn't spin the ball properly. Because uh, that was Jerry. Was <laughs> like like, a, like Jerry knows what the hell he's talking like Jerry, about. <laughs> well, Jerry, you know, here's the thing. Jerry did play football in college with Jimmy yeah. Jones, Jimmy Johnson. That's how they got to know each other. They were college uh, teammates right. in Arkansas, I believe it was. Uh, so they did, he did play football. Right. Um, but obviously, that did not translate to his GM, vice president, player <laughs> personnel uh, skills. Okay, uh, I mean they haven't been the same since Jimmy Johnson's players all left the year after Barry Switzer. Mm-hmm. I mean Switzer to me was a caretaker. You know, he had Jimmy Johnson's players. He had Aikman. Right. He had Emmett Smith. He had uh, Michael Irvin. I mean he had, you know, he had the guys. Yeah, uh, and then after that year when they all started signing free agent and retiring and things like that, that was it. They were done. Um, <laughs> once Jerry started meddling, <coughs> it only took a year for that team to get dismantled, you know, yeah. basically. Um, so he's out. It means Cooper Rush will be quarterbacking again, which probably means the offense will be different than most people think that it would have been under Dak or has been in the, in the, uh, right. Past under Dak, uh, probably be focused on the run more. Um, you have Gallup, you have C.D. Lamb. They both look like they're playing now. Yeah, uh, Schroeder's Schroeder's supposed to be back. Uh, the uh, the tight end. Uh, Schultz is questionable. Schultz is Dalton Schultz. I don't know where I got Schroeder. He's questionable, but he was back a little bit last week. He might his role may increase again this week. Uh, Michael Parsons is questionable. He hurt his groin last week. And a groin, I mean, you can make all the jokes you want. Yeah. Once you hurt your groin, yeah. that hurts. it doesn't, if it's not completely healed, which I doubt it's going to be in a week, um, you one wrong turn and you could tweak that thing and be out for weeks. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I if I had to bet on him playing, I think he plays because it's a big game. I really, uh, I do too because he did finish after uh, the injury last week, but it was on a very limited basis. It was like yeah. third down and long, second and long. So he may come in for pass rushing um, from the outside, but uh, I don't see him playing obviously anywhere near as much. But he can play enough to make a difference. Yeah. He, and he's a, you know, Dallas or not, I don't, I'm not a Dallas fan, but I got to admit that that's a great pick. He's a great player. Yeah. Um, and uh, he could wreck, he could wreck havoc in that backfield. If he gets in there. Um, the only bad part for him is if he's a little bit tweaked, Hertz might run right over. You know, yeah. or, or Sanders, they may run right over. Um, Philly is picked by six. Which is a lot. I think it's a lot in this game. Um, I will take Philly at home. 
Okay. But they don't fare well against backup quarterbacks in the previous years. That's true. So, so guys they've I will, never seen before. You're right. Yeah, I'll take Dallas to cover. Uh, but the Eagles will win the game. Okay. Um, as of now, I have Dallas across the board. And I know that surprises you too, probably. Um, for one of those same reasons you said. Um, they don't fare well against quarterbacks that they haven't played against. Now, they've obviously seen enough film and tape on Cooper Rush. Um they also seem to me to have, I know they're playing a great defense right now, but they do seem to have trouble historically against the run. And Dallas has Zeke starting to play the role of the bruiser, which he, he needed to do. And Pollard's really, to me, Pollard's a really good running back. Yeah. Um, I think they could have some problems against the run which then could set everything else up. And that's how they've been, Dallas has been playing. So I kind of like their offense. In a way, it scares me a little bit more with Cooper Rush at quarterback because they'll go to the run more. And then, like you said, they always have that problem with quarterbacks that they have not seen. Yes. Um, I, I may change it on the express to go – Philly straight up, but either way, I think Dallas will cover. Um, that'll be just a hunch, a feeling, whatever, but it might may be in the same ballpark as you uh, right. as of Sunday. But as of now, it's a bit of a difference. I think Dallas may have an edge, but I am going to keep an eye on the Micah Parsons thing. That to me makes a huge difference. That makes a huge Philly. difference. Absolutely. For Philly. If he, if it looks like he's limited, uh, and I and I tend to think he will be, uh, or not play at all, where he tweaks himself early and can't come back in. And that's a possibility, too. Um, that one, obviously, no one can predict. Right. Uh, but I, I I am buying more time till the Sunday morning express to, uh, to uh, make that final determination. But I'm leaning toward Dallas winning the game. Uh, the fact that the Eagles are undefeated and always play to their competition most of the time. Like even this week, Arizona, they had chances to run away with that game and didn't. Right. You know, and barely held on because of a mental error, really. Um, but that's what good teams do. So if they are a good team, that's what's going to happen a couple of times during the season. Uh, but I think Dallas may beat them this week. The only reason they might not is a the home game. You got to give that three point differential. Either way, I think Dallas will cover. Right. And I think Micah Parsons, if he can't get in the backfield, uh, or they figure out a way to stay away from him, if he's limited in, in his playing time, and, right. and so. But for now, I'm taking Dallas across the board, buddy. So I have that as our fourth difference. And then there was Monday. <laughs> And if you are ESPN, you're probably not thrilled with this game either. It is Denver at L.A. to play the Chargers. The spread at the moment is five. Yeah, if you would have asked me at the beginning of the season, I thought this would be a very uh, competitive and fun game to watch. But Denver's play calling uh, – they're just uh, – they're, they're a mess right now. Yeah. They got the talent. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, this is going to be my lock of the week. Ooh. And uh, I'll, take the, I'll take the Chargers. I'll take the Chargers. I'll put this down here. Billy's lock of the week. Taking the Chargers all the way. Yep. Which I did too, but obviously I didn't make it my lock of the week. I guess I need to go back and look at my lock of the week. Uh, let's see. I oh, the easy one, the easy one would be the Rams. <laughs> nah, it, it probably is, but I'm not going to go with that. A because it's probably too easy, and B to me, it's uh, no. I think Carolina might hang around for a while. My lock of the week, I think, is going to be 
Yeah, it's one of two here. I think I'm going to go with Tom Terrific. I think it's it, – because it's either Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh or Green Bay over the Jets. Yeah, that, the other one was Green Bay for me. I was, yeah. But, but I, uh, I'm starting to like the Jets, so I – yeah, I am too. And Green Bay doesn't have a lot of weapons, but they do have two good running backs. Yeah. Um. You know what? I'm gonna go with Green Bay. I'm gonna take right, that you're as my lock. Green Bay. Yeah, I'm <laughs> taking that as my lock of the week. Uh. Just uh, just a hunch. Pittsburgh's playing at home. Maybe their defense will wake up a little bit. I don't know. But I think Green Bay is going to be too much for the Jets. I think the Jets are going to come down to earth uh, uh, defensively, I think. And I think the Packers are going to run the ball a little bit more or use their backs even a little bit more. And uh, maybe Lazard and uh, just try to uh, get something going. Uh, they may work on a rookie wide receiver to try to on their own, one of their guys to try to see if they have somebody that can break yeah. out a little bit um, speed wise. Uh, but I think I'm going to stick with Green Bay as the lock of the week. And they're going to, like you said it earlier, I think they're going to come out fired up. I think yeah. after after the Giants game, I think they're going to play desperate. I think they're going to play and throw the kitchen sink at the Jets. And it's, yeah, in Green, I, I think so. yeah. and it's back in Green Bay. And they're coming off. I know they flew back home, but they're coming off some rest. So uh, that extra, a little extra. Uh, the last I heard as well, this could be interesting, but I don't, I don't see it as being a huge difference. The Giants punter was stuck in London because he had a visa problem as of <laughs> yesterday. He was still in London as of yesterday. Wow. Because there's a problem with his visa. Uh what struck me as funny, I was they let him in. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, let's say expired. The the, you let the you guy know, in, but now you won't let him didn't out. realize it expired, but still, even maybe it expired. It, you know, it expire had over the weekend. I mean, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say it was expired, but they said there there are visa issues. So usually it's unusual. If there's a visa issue, they usually can't wait to kick you out. Yeah. Um, but and not just unless that, he's they, got a visa he, issue in the U.S., maybe it's a U.S. Yeah, I mean, because I, I mean, you you figure you're all you're all with the team, so you're, right. I mean, you're talking fifty five guys. Fifty five, but everybody's got to have their own individual yeah. visa. I mean, it's like if I went to Toronto for the comedy festival, nobody's going to back me and say, "Oh, he's he's a comedian; he gets carte blanche." I got to right. show exactly. my passport, and my visa, and get in there. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, that that makes it interesting. But I Monday night, the last game, Chargers Denver. I went with the Chargers as well. My lock of the week is Green Bay over the Jets by more than seven. Um, you know, I, I would be surprised if if Green Bay, like you said before, doesn't come out and just smoke. It was between that and the Tampa Bay Pittsburgh mm -hmm. game. I don't think Mike Tomlin's going to go to Pittsburgh get at home, especially get beat like they as bad as they did last week. I think he's going to try to figure out some ways to do some defense and, and more of a ball control. Yeah. You know, uh, though it scares me because Tampa Bay does have a pretty good defense and they might be in Pickett's face all day. Yeah. So if anything, that's probably the game I should have taken, but I'm just <laughs> going to take the Packers and go ride with Aaron Rodgers. There I'm going to R-E-L-A-X. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so there we have it. That, folks, is our picks for week six, as well as our review of week seven, uh, or week five. Our review of week seven. Wow. That, <laughs> our review of week five. Um, oh, okay. I see what that message was about. I have to get a uh, a thing filled. For my eyes but uh, that's what it was about all the all that intermediate noise you heard about so uh, so my, if my picks are bad i have an eye problem <laughs> if my <laughs> picks are good my eye problem got fixed <laughs> <laughs> gotta gotta do what i gotta do buddy you know there you go so uh unless you have something bill i think we are about the o and e done yeah no i think uh 
think we've got everything covered there, buddy. We got it. Enjoy tomorrow night's game if you can, because it's I don't see that it is a uh, it's Washington and uh, and Chicago. The, the Bears. It actually could be. Yeah, a I mean, competitive game because both teams are mediocre. Yeah, I mean, I don't best, think I don't see it being explosive. Level. Yeah, I don't see it being explosive, but I mean, it should no, be. It should be it could a be close a game. Good game, and you could see a couple of like peewee football type mistakes. You know, guys <laughs> fumbling, fumbling, bubbling, stumbling, <laughs> rubbling. But both teams would probably do that, so it could be a pretty entertaining game. Uh, but then again, we thought Denver and Indy would be a, a pretty entertaining game, and uh, yeah, you know, the score was close. It was uh, all field goals. It was all field. It wasn't. It wasn't good. Indy's happy with it, but it wasn't. Yeah, good. I'm a little worried about Russell Wilson in that Denver offense. But I, I think you're right. You made a quick remark, and I think you're absolutely right. I think it's bad play calling. I think they're misusing yeah. Russell Wilson terribly. I think. I mean, I think that's why they even came up with the end. You know, his shoulder injury. I'm not. I'm not saying he probably doesn't, but I think this is yeah. all a PR yeah. thing. Saying, you know, I mean. Well, I think part of it too is that um, um, he's a mobile quarterback, and they have him staying in the pocket unless he yeah. has said, "I don't really want to do that" or something. I don't know, right. but but he's a running quarterback. A mobile yeah. quarterback, I mean, and he's not doing any of that. He's yeah. dropping back. There's no RPOs, no run pass options, no yeah. rollouts. He's, he's got good weapons. He's got Judy, and he's got Judy, and he's got Sutton, uh, even Gordon, who's the backup running back because Joseph's out for the season. Uh, he's yeah. a, he's a good back. I mean, he's got to watch it. They're they're not overly thrilled with him because he has a fumbleitis problem. And that's that's what they were finally saying. I was wondering why isn't he getting more touches? That's what scares them as he fumbles the ball a lot. Right. Uh, so, but I think they're going to have to try to use him a little bit more, maybe out of the backfield instead of running the ball where he's known to fumble. Uh, but he does. You're right. He does have weapons, and he's got Noah Fan, who's not a bad mm-hmm. tight end. He's no, no, Noah's Noah's with Seattle now. Oh, but they got well, they got the rookie Oba, whatever his name is, Oba something. <laughs> he's good. I mean, yeah. I remember making a couple of great catches. He's pretty good. So he's got weapons. So I I think I think it's a misuse of the offense, or it's the wrong offense for him. Yeah, I think this this will be the next coach that's going to be. Uh, you know, and I wasn't a Richard Sherman fan. I always thought he was just a touch overrated in Seattle. But I will say, as a broadcaster, he hit it right on the head when he said, look, you have to adapt your offense to the player, not the player to your offense. Right. And it, and he's right. you got a guy like Russell Wilson. you got to tell your offense to use Russell Wilson's skills. That right. would be like telling Josh Allen, don't roll out, stay in the pocket. <laughs> he's a good passer, yes. But that extra threat of him being able to run outside and run you over, yeah, it make, makes their offense dynamic almost. I mean, it's unbelievable. So, yeah. uh, so there we have it. Um, All right. So that could be entertaining tomorrow night. Uh, the Monday night game, Chicago, go Commanders, and, uh, Washington. <laughs> and I think we both took Washington across the board. Yeah, we did. So, well, it's yeah. that one point difference. So. Watch Wentz look like a Hall of Famer tomorrow, buddy. <laughs> we'll okay. see. All right, guys. So thank you very much for tuning in. We're out of here. We will see you Sunday morning for the Sunday Morning Express on Facebook Live only. It's exclusive. Um, Meanwhile, watch us on everything, or you can listen to us in the car on the favorite place you get your podcasts or Simplecast Radio. Um, That is it for us from the cheap seats. I'm John Harris along with Billy Smith. Thanks, bad boy, Bill. We will see you guys. Thanks, buddy. Have a good week and enjoy the games. Yep. We will see you guys Sunday morning for the Express. Have a great week, Bill. We'll see you in a couple of days. You got it, buddy.